Hello everyone, my name is Griffin Knight and we are here with another reaction video. This one is called Fat Influencers Are Passing Away. Now, I think by this time a lot of you probably know how I feel about this fat acceptance thing, fat influencers. I think it's all pretty goddamn dumb and it it just shouldn't be a thing people should not be so accepting of being so overweight or obese because a lot of the um medical problems that people have majority of them probably could be solved if they just you know lost weight and got healthier Oh, Freya, you quit your mowing. You got nothing to mow about. But uh, let's see what this video has to say about these fat influencers who seem to be passing away. Fat acceptance is a cult. Just a reminder that I am very fat and very sexy. And I am 100% glorifying obesity. I want to inspire bigger... Yeah, no. <laughs> That's one thing... That's one big thing, <clears throat> pardon my pun, that should not be glorified or accepted in any way. I am a bigger person, and I want to lose weight. It's the one thing I have a hard time with is keeping the motivation to do so. But, um, yeah, obesity shouldn't be glorified or anything because most of the people who are consuming this sort of content are kids and they are very impressionable and you know they're not that smart it's this is just it's horrible goes all over the world this is what i manifest every single day choo choo Shoot, shoot. There's nothing you can do. Yikes. I'm fat and I'm sexy. I'm fat and I'm sexy. Sure, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but I don't know about you. I don't find any sexiness in contributing to the statistics that obesity is the leading cause of death in the US. Very hot, I know. Just because I'm fat. I don't know if it's the number one leading cause of death in the United States, but it, it is more than, I'm, I'm guessing it's probably in the top three, which is not surprising. Can, and mind you, we are not considered the fattest country in the world. America is not considered the fattest country in the world. We are probably somewhere in the twenties or thirties, maybe. I don't know, but we're not, we're not the number one. I know for a fact that we're not. But still, it, it's, we seem, America seems to be the only country that seems to be out of its fucking mind when it comes to this stuff, which I don't understand, but it's what we have to live with. That doesn't invalidate the thing that I said. She died. You ready to get super size? She died too. Today I got the big fruit loop. <laughs> He's dead. Join me on my fat positive radio show, which didn't last long because she died. Unlike how Dove or the new wave of Victoria's Secret wants you to believe, healthy beauty does not come at every size. And certainly not at a lot of- Yeah, it is amazing how large the human body is able to get. It, it truly is fascinating how large we can get. But at the same time, it's kind of disgusting. As a fat man myself, I can say it's disgusting. People should not be getting this big. I mean, having a little, you know, excess fat, you know, that's fine, I think. Just a little, but to this extent, no, this is just not right. ...of the socially noble body positive plus sizes. Yet, it is absolutely not wholesome to point that out. So much corporate glorification has been done to powder the fat elephant in... See, it, it's, it's bad when it gets to the point where you can't do things for yourself. If I ever got to the point where I couldn't even wipe my own ass, yeah, that's that's way too fucking far. 
I mean, even right, even right now for how big I am, my feet are always hurting. I have a manual labor type job, so I know my feet are going to be sore, but it would be less so if I lost probably about a hundred or so pounds. But to get to this point is just, and there are people who enable this. There people who enable this are, should, they're, they're just as bad as those who are getting this big. In the room that obesity is in fact a disease not a bragging point obesity is a chronic health condition that right uh raises the risk for health health uh, heart disease sorry the leading cause of death in the united states and is linked to many other health problems including type 2 diabetes and cancer well just both types of diabetes but yeah I mean, it, it's very easy to not become obese. Just, you know, don't eat more than the energy you put out and you won't get big. But corporations don't want you to get well because there's a gold mine in fatness, not just in convincing you to shed it, but also for you to keep it. Take body positive all-star Dove, for instance. Real beauty comes at every size. They stretch out their plastic bottles and video game figures to slap on words like beautiful, sexy, confident whenever they can. Like every other human, I wanted to believe that it was to support the self-love journey of women and leave it at that. But no, I decided to ruin my day and my trust in humanity by researching a bit more and found out that Dove is owned by Unilever. And guess what else Unilever owns? Ben & Jerry's ice cream, Magnum ice cream, and many other ice creams, Hellman's mayo and all your greasy burgers, Skippy peanut butter, a selection of frozen foods. I can go on. Isn't it nice? to encourage your consumers to accept their enlarging body and deteriorating health as the ideal in order to sell more of your processed foods because their beautiful bodies deserve more has body positivity let's see daily reminder that fat people can be and are sexy no they're not sorry to all the fat people out there but uh, as a fat person myself i will say no we are not not in any way, shape, or form are we sexy. Just a reminder that I'm very fat and very sexy. No, you're not. You have the makings of someone being sexy, but lose the weight and you'll be there. I'm, I'm not going to be nice during this video. I'm sorry. I'm not going to be nice. People got so bothered the last time I did this dance because I called fat people hotties. Fat people are not hotties. I'm sorry to say. They are just not. A movement intended to uplift women become. See, I'm doing it again. Fat people are so hot. No, they're not. Just see. Here's here's the thing. A lot of this thing, the vast majority of this sort of thing is all women. I'm I like I said. I'm not going to be nice during this. It's all women. Now, when all the women that are doing this are getting all the support, all the love, good people going slay queen, yada yada, all this dumbass pandering bullshit. You don't see very many men doing this because we know it's stupid. There are men who do this. I will not deny that. And they're fucking dumb. I'm sorry to say, but uh, I'm a guy and I'm not going to be nice about it. If you do this and you think that you are sexy, uh, you think it's okay, you think it's healthy... You need to get yourself checked into a mental institution because you are just not, no, it's, it's not okay. You are not sexy. You are not healthy. You are not beautiful. You're not powerful. You're not brave. You are just taking the easy way out because you refuse to put any hard work in. Manipulative limits to our acceptable emotions. My dear sweet child, that's what I do. It's what I live for. And worse, <laughs> a cover for big food, big farming, and big pharmaceutical companies to profit off a nation of increasingly sick and fat people. None of this is a coincidence. So the industry 
has engineered what they call the bliss point for the perfect amount of sugar in products. Not too little, not too much. Working on maximizing the allure of their products. Quote, we like them fat. Pick any ultra processed foods at your local grocery store, for example. Some Kraft mac and cheese, a Nestle drumstick paired with some Kit Kat, Coffee Crisp, Smarties, and why not throw in some Laffy Toffee? Pop in the Kool Aid and four cans of Dr. Pepper to keep hydrated. Oh, and can't forget the Oreo and Chips Ahoy. Four cans of Orange Fanta for the vitamins. Fanta balance, as one may say. As conventional beauty standards have become much more accepting and ambiguously defined by beauty giants. But guess who owns the beauty giants? Conglomerates like Nestle, Unilever, who sell you anything from chocolate to ice cream to frozen foods. And that is when the Dove body soaps begin to make sense. Not saying that all body positive and fat acceptance campaigns are there to manipulate and trick you into increasing your body fat percentage without limits. And that is exactly- They're mainly there to try and make it so people accept or people will get into thinking that it's okay to be fat. It's okay to be big. It's okay to be obese or, wh or what have you. They're, they're just me. They're not, I don't think they're trying to get people fat. Although that's probably one of the things they would like because you know, it's their food, but um, they're, I think their main goal is to try and make it more acceptable to be fat for people to be okay with everyone being fat. Look, for me personally, if if you are okay with your you being the size that you are and you're happy about it, that's fine by me. You know, live your live your life, be happy. But when it becomes a problem is when you try and preach it to the masses and try and tell kids and whatnot that it's okay to be fat. It's it's healthy to be fat. At that point, you are causing harm to the populace. Now, if you want to keep it to yourself, by all means, be fat, be happy. But it becomes a problem when you start affecting the people at large. Uh, pun not intended, but, you know, there. <laughs> it See, you know, love what you do. It, do what makes you happy. But don't expect um, to not be criticized as soon as you start bringing everyone else into it. Start uh, shoving it down people's throats. It's the same with religion. If you want to preach your religion and such, that's fine. Just don't shove it down people's throats. That's when it starts to become a problem. Do what you love, but make sure it doesn't harm others. Exactly the issue. So much of the message comes actually from an extremely caring and helpful perspective to help remove the stigma around plus size people. But also, so much fat glorify. This just blue food, blue noodles just does not look right. Vacation has been disguised as acceptance. Oh my God. And when the majority of your stakeholders need to make money from selling frozen pizzas and ice cream, the votes are not up to you. Hiding profit generating fat glorification under the term fat acceptance is genius in two ways. First, it plays on the sentiment of correcting social injustices in society. Yes, arguably so, the statistical likelihood of fat and obese people facing more difficulties in society, such as prejudices, is a lot higher. And the stigmatization in media brought unfair shaming to obese individuals, which should never be normalized. But glorifying obesity, the disease, as conventional beauty hints at a moral superiority and makes anyone's opinions who differ morally shallow regardless if fat is unhealthy or not. Second, a food company telling you that being fat is natural, which isn't, and awesome, is not so convincing. Yeah, being fat and obese is not the natural state to which a human body is supposed to be at. We are supposed to be, naturally, we're supposed to be not thin, but not fat. I would say um, f a fit, 
in a way. We're, we're supposed to be fit and healthy. That's our natural state. We're, our natural state isn't supposed to be fat and unhealthy and, God forbid, a fucking whale. Or even rail thin like you see a lot of the Victoria models are. Those are not our natural states of being. Insane. There's no waistline worry with Coke, you know. This individual size bottle has no more calories than half a grapefruit. When you can spot their profit mode. Yeah, pop, it doesn't matter how much calories they have. They have a shit ton of sugar. That is what is helping, that is what is contributing to the fat, is all that fucking sugar. Addictive ingredients. Soda contains ingredients like caffeine and sugar that can be addictive. Exactly. For instance, much like uh, addictive substances such as alcohol and drugs, caffeine also triggers the release of the feel-good hormone dopamine in the brain, making you crave more of it. If there is anything in my life that I am addicted to, it is pop. I have been addicted to pop since the first time I had... Uh, it was either a root beer or cream soda that was my first pop. I can't remember which, but uh, ever since then... I have been addicted to pop. It's something I should address, but uh, yeah, <laughs> I'll probably be addicted to it till the day I die. Motive from 50 miles away. Coke is low in calories too. Hey now, don't you get any thinner? A direct hard sell won't work here. But when a beauty or self-care company you never associate with frozen pizza casts someone plus size for a commercial, you get fired up with a sense of justice. Yeah, that is beautiful too. Don't get me wrong, overly restrictive beauty with models who are only Kate Moss level hero and chic is also problematic because again, it is not healthy. But as much as many wish, the spectrum of healthy does not stretch over oh to obesity. My God. It is amazing. I'm sorry, that's... I, I love food, but that to me is just sickening. It it makes me feel sick. This... Hang on. The spectrum of healthy does not... This... This just... This amount of food actually makes me feel sick. I don't know how there are people who can consume all this and there are people who can consume about this much and still stay thin and that fucking amazes me and it makes me jealous but this this is just sickening stretch over to obesity it is amazing let's see y'all make this trend to exclude larger fat women we're not excluding nobody is excluding fat women or fat people you are the one that is excluding yourself because stuff in society is not generally made for people who are, are obese. They're made for people who should be within a natural state, which is not fat. You've landed on fat plus on fat talk. Your daily dose of fat girly appreciates. How about we like, how about we just appreciate the person? and not the obesity. Can we just appreciate the person if they're a person worth appreciating? Because there are people who don't need appreciation because they are just genuine, uh, genuinely horrible people. But this, this is just stuff that should not be allowed on TikTok because you are glorifying something that is a severe detriment to your health and your daily life. Amazing that women of all sizes are loving and accepting who they are, but genuine self-love and confidence comes from within and not society telling you or some ads telling you that your size is also quote-unquote beautiful. What we're talking about here is not the opposite of fat shaming. For shaming someone for any reason is not acceptable behavior because it does not come from a place of genuine care of wanting to help them be well. We're talking about the glorification of fat disguised as today I'd like to take a moment to glorify obesity. It's it's people like this. I'm I'm like I said I'm not going to be nice. It's people like this that should not have a TikTok. Should not have any sort of social media platform because Obesity is something like that has been said many times should not be glorified. 
It is a detriment to your fucking health. It does nothing to help uh, further society. It does nothing to help further a person in their daily life. It It is uh, nothing but a hindrance on society and the person individually. If you glor if you go on and glorify obesity to do stupid shit like this, I'm sorry, you should have your video taken down or your or your platform just banned. Because this this is this just does nothing but destroy people. Acceptance. Positivity is toxic because it pretends to be rooted in compassion and kindness. But in reality, it encourages women to engage in very destructive behaviors. It encourages women to be obese, unhealthy, and be averse to personal responsibility and discipline. If you think most... Yeah, that's, that's, that's another thing. A lot of this body positivity stuff, all these all these fat influencers, all these bigger people, they take no personal responsibility for the decisions they made that got them that big. They say that it's society's fault, it's big companies' fault, it's this person's fault, it's that person's fault, it's this fault, that fault, whatever and whatnot. They blame every single person but themselves for getting to where they are. You have, if you are a bigger person, if you are obese, morbidly obese, you, if you are a fucking whale, you have nobody to blame but yourself because you decided to eat so very unhealthy and do nothing about it that you got to where you are. Like for me, I have no one to blame but myself because I kept, I kept getting bored. And one bad thing to do out of boredom is to eat. I ate out of boredom a lot. And I got to where I am because I made the poor decision to do so. I have nobody to blame but myself. It's the same with all these fat influencers or f fat fucks on the internet who keep glorifying obesity, saying that it's okay, and telling everybody that it's not their fault that they're big. It's society's fault. It's company's fault. It's whoever's fault. It's nobody's fault but your own that you got that big. Stop blaming everybody and start taking some personal responsibility for your own dumbass decisions. Body positivity campaigns are to help you love yourself. I'm sorry, honey. Corporate America is a surfacely sweet, but extremely cruel place. It's like, how can you not see the problem? They have to see it and just not care. They have to just be like, well, we're gaining profit. Do you see how much this McDonald's is making? Put another one across the street. There is nothing wrong with fat acceptance. I'm, I'm sorry for pausing on time, but this, the woman with the cane in that video made me think of another thing. She, she, if I remember correctly, she kept blaming that she has no way to lose weight or anything. There are paraplegics. There are people who have amputations, who have no legs whatsoever. Who even have no arms. Who are not fat and who are able to stay healthy. So anybody out there complain, unless you have a severe medical condition. and Because there are actual medical conditions that prevent you from losing weight. And I understand that. But that is such a small percentage of people. So minutely small. Other than those people, nobody has any excuse to make saying that they can't lose weight. You, there is no excuse. You are able to lose weight. You just refuse to do so because it is, it, it, it's a, a hard road to travel. I understand that people like to take the, the road less traveled, the easy way out, because it doesn't require any work at all. But you need to start taking some personal responsibility and actually putting in the work to lose weight. Stop making excuses and start doing something about it. Take some personal responsibility. Acceptance of reality is the first and most essential step to all or any type of progress but the importance of what to do after accepting the reality is often neglected and never talked about telling fat people to keep eating the way that's not serving their health because they are beautiful is like telling an alcoholic to keep on drinking because they're fun it's the easy and profitable thing to do having a fat country makes us money but at the end of the day it is irresponsible to push unhealthy, oh my god addictive behaviors to a greater extreme with the power of both brainwashing 
I don't understand how people can watch other people eat. To me, it's just, it's, personally, I find it gross. Especially when you see, whoops. Where was I on this? Irresponsible to push unhealthy. Especially when you see videos like this, just fat ass people glorifying the way they are and glorifying what they eat. I don't understand how there are people who can stand to watch this stuff because it is just disgusting. It's revolting. The addictive behaviors to a greater extreme <clears throat> with the power of both brainwashing, quote unquote, self love ads and processed foods designed in a way that's addicting, easy to eat, and easy to repeat the eating pattern. It's not a simple good versus bad food, normal versus fat problem. It's a whole addictive pattern building trap. I lost 60 pounds in six months. Everyone was so happy for me. I hated myself. I hated the way I looked. I hated why I exercised. Naturally fat. Our daily trips to McDonald's genetics is eating chips in bed genetics is being allergic to the gym genetics is running a hundred miles genetic. See, here's the thing. There is, there is something called good fat. And, but a lot of the stuff we see here is not good fat. Back in a universe where fat just meant fat and not a compliment or insult, fat just means you have excess energy stored in your body that you are not using. Obesity or overweight is... Ugh. Obesity is a complex disease that occurs when an individual's weight is higher than what is considered healthy for his or her height. Obesity affects children as well as adults. Many factors can contribute to excess weight gain, including eating patterns, physical activity levels, and sleep routines. Yes. Another reason why I'm fat is because I have a horrible sleeping routine. I get so distracted by all the bells and whistles that I have, figurative, figure of speech, um, that I end up not falling asleep till around between 10 uh, p.m. and midnight. And I have to get up at like 4.30 in the morning for work. So I, I'd probably be a lot healthier if I started getting the sleep that I actually need. But I also have a lot of physical inactivity. I'm mostly on my computer here all the time. I don't really go out unless it's to go to the store or go to work. So I could do with some more physical activity. Oh, excuse me. Ugh. And I'd probably be a lot better, but yeah. A disorder involving excessive body fat that increases the risk of health problems. Notice how something that elevates your risk of dying of cardiac arrest is a disorder and is not normal. Needless to say, glamorously framed as the modern sexiness. Yet times and times again, science and data say one thing and media and advertising say another. Beauty is supposed to be diverse and natural, but there is nothing natural about being obese. Obesity prevalence was stably low until shooting up post the 70s. And even though there is no data evidently backing up its absence in our hunter and gatherer days, rare civilizations removed from modern processed foods and lifestyles such as the Chimene tribe is a close modern case. The Chimene, a Bolivian population living in a subsistence lifestyle of hunting, gathering, fishing, and farming, had the lowest levels of coronary heart diseases reported to date and statistically insignificant obesity. And yes, they also eat sugar and starchy carbs just harvested by themselves. So do these people just have some godsend fat-proof genetics? No, the overall Bolivian population that shares similar genetics is still subject to 28 and 17% of obesity for women and men. So if they also eat carbs, fat, protein, just like the American diet, why are they rarely inflicted with fat-related health comp- There's actually two easy ways to deduce this. One, majority of them do not eat more than the energy they put out. Therefore, they don't get fat. And the other thing is, they are probably physically active the majority of their day. Because they're always having to do something. 
they don't have all the nice high tech and all that stuff that modern society has like the in like the big cities have they they're not that high tech it's easy it's it's obvious to see why they don't really have an obesity problem Patients. Is all the difference really in the absence of food processing? According to CDC, Americans are eating more calories on average than they did in the 1970s. Between 1971 and 2000, the average man added 168 calories to his daily fare, while the average woman added 335 calories a day. What is driving this trend? Experts say it's a combination of increased availability, bigger portions, and more high calorie foods, but nothing beats the devious design design of processed foods to get people hooked as an addictive coping mechanism to rising psychological issues. Food addiction is a carefully designed process. People aren't stuffing their faces in beans when they're having a bad day. Quote, foods that are very high in fat and carbohydrate in equal ratio don't exist naturally said Gerhardt, a clinical psychologist at the University of Michigan. It is something that is designed by food scientists in a laboratory to look a certain way, feel a certain way in your mouth, smell a certain way when you open the package. So once you had one pleasant experience with it, you want more. And you want it more often. Food addiction is on the rise and the conglomerates are normalizing it. Or rather, glamorizing the consequence of it. So much of the fat acceptance movement oh is actually God. a brainwashing ad for addictive junk food. And yes, excuse my language for it is now politically incorrect to call food good or bad. And I agree. It's all based on perspective. Good for what and bad for what and how much of good before it turns not so good. Because good versus bad is so subjective, it's easier than ever for food companies to manipulate the concept. Because the easier answer is always one that makes you feel good. To eat as much as you want and still feel great about yourself. Get that fiber and the antioxidants and just feel. And the greatest beneficiaries to glorifying this disease is the toxic triad of big farming, big food, and big pharma for creating a nation of sick and fat people. Let me put it into context. About a third of our economy thrives on making people more fat and sick. Big farming grows 500 more calories per person per day than 25 years ago. Industrially processed foods with addictive combinations of fat, sugar, and salt deter the stop signals for eating. I, I think it would be pretty easy for a lot of these, for our country at large, to make it so that food is healthier and better for us, but uh, there's not really much money to be made in that. So there is more money to be made in fat people and keeping people fat than it is to make a country healthy. So it would probably be, be probably, probably, I can't fucking speak. It would probably be very easy for them to make things better, but they just don't want to because they don't see any money in it. The sicker our population, the more medications are sold for high cholesterol, diabetes, high blood pressure, depression, and other lifestyle-driven diseases. While more and more of us believe not only is this okay, this type of sickness is sexy. Jesus Christ. Tiny head, big ass body. And beautiful. And sadly, the profit-driven version of the fat acceptance movement targets women way more. Why do we see a range of plus size models from mannequins in retail to Victoria's Secret fashion shows while men's fashion still shows buff and toned models and plastic mannequins? Something... Because it's okay for it to be about women and nobody cares about men. Does not add up. Perhaps it is because of the preconceived notion that women care more about appearances or that many women still take the main responsibility for shopping for food. For the whole household, which drives more impact in speeding up the fattening of the population, leading to more. Oh my God. I'm sorry, you really fail as a parent if you let your child get this fucking big. Thickness. The spiral itself, from farming to food processing to solving a naturally increasing problem, is just bleak 
and sickening. Self-acceptance is not the opposite from self-improvement and is certainly not the logical reason to regenerate 90% of your cells from frozen pizzas, chocolates, chips, and whatever genius foods corporations created to keep you addicted and sick. Part of loving yourself is to actually take accountability for your well-being instead of letting profit-seeking commercials tell you that you are enough. Being positive does not mean being unrealistic. It requires the courage to face the discomfort of broken delusions and be willing to make changes if needed. Body positivity movement has now resulted in, in magazine covers that actually says this is healthy. The lifestyle of being obese is now not only beautiful, but it's healthy. Glorifying a disease is not self-love, it's delusion. Of course I don't have any health problems. I'm always out of breath and it's hard to do things, but that's because of fat phobia. The doctor's not listening to me. It has nothing to do with the fact that my fupa restricts my movement. And despite how impossible <laughs> it seems, what you do- I've seen that video a few times. That's actually pretty damn funny. Do after acceptance is still your choice to make. That's a food for thought. I like <laughs> that was I like how funny she was being with that. It's just deliberately stupid. But uh that was fat influencers are passing away. So what do you all think about that? What do you think about the fat acceptance movement, the body positivity, all this stupid ass shit that these fat uh influencers are doing? Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Make sure make sure to subscribe for more. Uh not really sure what else to say about this, but uh, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day, and I will see you all in the next video. Bye-bye.